That's a good character. Yeah, you gotta just hero. you literally just do your oh guitar what? hero. Guitar. Oh my god. Um. <laughs> All right, full bias. Let's go, Let's Sleepy Psyduck. Go. Let's go. Zelda right. is gonna be a bit annoying though, because I'm assuming Sleepy Side is gonna be very menu heavy based on the movement limitations, <laughs> or not. Okay, he's just going in. But already coming in with the kaboom. I wish there was like rock out sound effects every time he moved. Like. Right, and I think uh, actually got the hitbox of the Thrak as well. Oh, oh you're crazy. I'm Let's not go. gonna kill the this gods yet. of rock and roll. Blessing Sleepy Side <laughs> right there. Let's go. Rockin' unable to put on a single percent so far. Jab putting him back off stage. Almost gets the sizzle. All right, finally forward smashes his way in. Rockin' looking like he wants to play the video game, too. He did pay $60 for it, or at the very least the $15 it takes to get into Xeno. Hey, Sleepy played a lot for this uh, Guitar Hero controller. Right? <laughs> okay, that F -til, F till not going to take it. Good DI. Ooh, but not ready for the uh, the, the Furore's Wind. Now, Rockin is starting to look this a little bit competitive, putting Sleepy Psyduck into these orange percents. Has a, oh. ooh, a lightning kick and a phantom. Sleepy Psyduck losing their first stock. Yeah, Sleepy Psyduck's been just jumping above the stage kind of every time when coming back against Zelda. And that's super, like, Zelda's fish for that. You know, they know you want to get above that phantom and try to fair it or up air it. So Rockin doing some uh, some simple, uh, what do we call it, uh, ledge trapping right there, but worked out. Bounce, not on the table anymore. That would be such a good option to just totally take that knight out of your mind. Mm -hmm. And just again, Sleepy Side oh. running into these hitboxes and getting uh, Dins fired relatively early. I think uh, they were only at like 80? Yeah, I think so too. When you get that sweet spot, it kills so early. Especially with 160% rage right now. You gotta close this out. Bounce is gonna be a great way to start that. I, I like the pressure with the jab jab dash back uh, to bait the grab, but just wasn't able to find to find the, the kill for it. Oh, oh. He, he, they deserve that for sure. Um, but uh, a bit off with that spacing, but good bait regardless. Yeah, I think uh, Sleepy Psyduck seems to be maybe a little bit more scared now to throw out uh, some of the menu stuff. Only now just uh, getting out the uh, getting the stock able to put up the accelerator. A bold oh. frizz. Oh, and yeah, you can't jump into this. It, Zelda just covers jumping so well. You gotta like wait out the night and then do something after. And another bold thwack as well. Very telegraphed. All right, get some heals on deck. And Rockin' just turn out these uh, Flores wins, keeping, uh, watch, getting sleepy side up, sleeping at the wheel, honestly. Another ledge trap. Oh. Good air dodge there by sleepy side up. Not getting caught by the neutral air. Another dash attack, putting them off stage. Another good air dodge. Oh, oh, that's a... You don't want that kind of down smash. I think that probably was like fall through the platform in the aerial. Oh, we just got 420 on the match, Arino. Hell oh, yeah. Oh, let's go. Let's get some blaze it's in. Yeah! Let's get a funny, get a funny grass go. <laughs> um, yeah, let's, uh, you know, it sucks that any new note donation will make the funny number go away unless we get to $42. Exactly. And zero cents. So let's get there a quick we go. 42. And that, then we can push for the $420, but we'll get there. Right. But first, who's going to be the brave hero that takes Ooh. us to $42 for the Xeno? 420 Xeno, $42 could go in one of these players' pockets. Costs a lot of money to get high, you know? You need some <laughs> money. You need, you need some money back. Not cheap, but uh, no, it was cheap. That Din's fire, killing that, it 77%. That was gross. All right, and it looks like we're gonna be going to Town and City, I think was uh, Sadak's counter pick. And I definitely can see this game. Um, I think uh, it looks like Sleepy Sadak kind of had that symptom of like losing a lead and kind of just throwing out moves, you know, not having a game plan for how to get the lead back. Mm -hmm. But we're actually seeing so, a character swap. Oh, the Terry. For, Sadak, for Terry. I, you know, Terry definitely listens to the type of music in Guitar Hero. I oh feel yeah, like, for absolutely. Sure. KOF is absolutely that kind of franchise. And uh, you know, I will say having an auto turnaround probably is nice on a controller that might like limit your like fluidity a bit as mm -hmm. for your movement. So just not having to worry about turning around could definitely be really comforting. 
Alright, ooh, I like the movement right now from Sleepy Psyduck, making Rockin' real uncomfortable in the corner there. Another that, power dunk. Oh, oh the that Phantom! Night. That, Get that down, Miss President! Oh, oh but it Miss President oh, <laughs> facing the wrong no. way, but it does not matter because That's of that misinput. So unfortunate. One of the real awkward things about Terry, if if you know you're not as experienced as Terry's inputs can just put you off stage and then you die. Oh, and the thing like this lead could be, this game could be so different. Wasn't for that night blocking this, but will not be there to block at that time. Pretty yeah, even yeah. game right now, and when it comes to percent done, you know, Sleepy Psyduck's done way more. So definitely, yeah, just get your confidence back. This could be really good. Oh, okay. oh my god. Crack yeah. Shoot. All right. And I like they in. went right back on stage after landing that. Don't not want to mess around with Zelda off stage. Honestly, just don't want to be off stage ever as Terry in this matchup. Absolutely not. Sleepy Psyduck's been playing a fairly strong grounded neutral thus far, and I feel like Rockin' just hasn't had the space to set up any phantoms, which, you know, you think Zelda can really oppress that sort of ground-based neutral. Ooh. But no, Rockin' just hasn't been able to find his footing in quite a long time now. All right, finally getting the dash attack. Sleepy Psyduck using that jump real early. Great use of the rising tackle. I don't know if that was the command version. No, actually, I don't believe it was. There was no the like blue. flashing blue. Yeah, I don't think uh, Sleepy Side has been doing any of these command ones, and I'm not sure if that's a controller limitation. I mean, like, <laughs> what what's about that? Um, I mean, at at some point, yeah, you, you do have to wonder like, where do you draw the line? Because I'm pretty sure that the command version of rising tackle would have killed there. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of getting killed. That kills very early, even on a like, heavy character like Terry. And I, I think his big problem is Sleepy Psyduck's not been able to uh, live very long any of these stocks. I think getting off stage and then kind of all, jumping on stage even as Terry right there. Zelda loves when you jump on stage, so it's just definitely like going to ledge more can be really beneficial. And missed space back air with the Sleepy Psyduck in a scary situation, able to find their way over the over the Phantom again. Yeah, and if you can hold Zelda at ledge here, this could be game. Ooh, that was a bit unfortunate. Ooh, Ooh that was clean. That that was a mix-up. That was that was smooth. That was such a good crack shoot to get over the F smash. Uh, I like that Sleepy Psyduck was like, okay, that was so clean, I'm going to just F smash after right? this. There's, there's no way they're ready for getting crossed up this hard. Kind of broke uh, Rockin's ankles a bit, and mm -hmm. the guitar hero lives another day. Let's see if they can close it out. And I do think I want to point out that, like, that entire game was mostly just Sleepy Psyduck playing neutral. We didn't see much, you know, Terry nonsense. We didn't see any of the wacky command uh, command specials. Uh, we certainly didn't see any go. Just yeah. good, solid neutral attacking Rockin when Rockin was attacking think, where he shouldn't be. Yeah, I was going to say, I think Rockin definitely hit Terry Shield far too much at least yeah. like with landing into him aerials just like that like you got if you're gonna hit terry shield you gotta do it fading away so you can't get jabbed right after you know because you, you can't cross up terry it's the very easy jab out of shield if you're anywhere near him so rockin definitely gonna need to do if you're gonna attack terry shield fade back more but honestly just more projectiles would be good like get that phantom out constantly because terry's want to be on the ground you know and if you put that phantom there can force him into shield can get a grab Absolutely, and I mean, that's what we were talking about in uh, game two, is Rockin' just wasn't able to set that up very much, and Sleepy Psyduck just played the neutral the whole time. Oh, I don't know if that crack shoot was intentional, oh, no. and neither was that air dodge. Rockin that's so unfortunate. Listen to my advice of putting phantoms out and grabbing the shield. It worked a little too well for Sleepy Psyduck's case, that SD on the mash out. Really rough. And we saw last uh, game one, Sleepy Psyduck does not seem to like have the greatest meant, like composure when trying to make a lead back, a lot of forcing stuff. So if Rockin plays carefully, I feel like this could be a really solid game three win. Yeah, but Sleepy Psyduck is getting these percentages up. Rockin already in those oranges, but another, oh, oh. great late confirm. Right, rising Tackle gets back on stage. Sleepy Psyduck. Still at 84%. I think that was a command burn knuckle. Yeah, but the thing is, like, if Rockin were to just stay still, Sleepy Psyduck would do a move into Rockin, you know? It, it doesn't seem like it. So I feel like Rockin right now just needs to play, like, a safe game, and moves are gonna kind of come into him. Mm -hmm. 
I do have to wonder if any of these are misinput, super yeah. inputs. I'm, I'm sure that power gazer did not need to go to the left right there, and Zelda's back up pretty powerful. And take it out, and you need to close the stock out, like right now, if you're Sleepy Psyduck. But Rock and Look just dashing back, he knows that Sleepy Psyduck's jumping into him, and that's gonna be the stock. Yep, finally the Burn Knuckle taking Rock and his first stock, but Sleepy Psyduck sitting on their potential last stock right now. The last stock of winners. And just these F smashes just not doing Sleepy Psyduck any favors, and neither was that power wave. Oh, that looked like it was gonna go on the ledge and like stuck on stage. Man, she catch rocking off guard too. Holding this ledge position is gonna be so important. It kind of backs off and gives oh, Rockin space. What's spacing there by Rockin for the F smash? All right, Go is on deck. We'll see if yeah. Sleepy Sida can pull these out. I don't know how well the guitar is yeah, conducive like, to these. I'm not sure how hard up tilt power Ugh. guys are in, but clearly some basic stuff can be challenging right there. You uh, just didn't jump, just instantly up these. Was not able to make it back. Maybe Sleepy Psyduck thought that they didn't need to use their jump, but regardless, maybe gonna be a game three win for Rockin'. Sleepy Psyduck does not beat this Guitar Hero boss, but still has the loser's bracket to shred it up. Rock on. Absolutely. You get back in that practice mode. Maybe Power Guys are the right way. I wonder how good Sleepy Psyduck is at like actual Guitar Hero. Like, can he like do expert through the fire and the flames, right. like full combo, like you know? Which you know, it's actually I've I've watched like there's like a whole Guitar Hero YouTube like community and such, and I've like watched their videos. It's, it's quite interesting. Um, they like it's called they like play on like a PC port called Clone Hero, and like people just make their own like oh, maps and stuff. It, it's pretty cool, yeah. So I'll ask. Uh, I I've, I haven't watched those videos in a while, but you know they make some insane stuff like. Through the fire and the flames is nothing compared to the stuff they make nowadays. But right. pretty cool stuff. Ooh, Rooting for sleep, right uh, sleepy penguin or sleepy Psyduck, not sleepy penguin. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a, a great set. And looks like we're going to be getting into another set really soon before getting into that. Just want to remind you guys, Xeno Saga May seventh, right here in the Xeno venue, and um, really easy to get to. A lot of trains go here. Uh, it is ten dollars for singles, ten dollars for doubles, five dollars each, and ten dollars for venue fee. Doors open at 1, doubles at 2, and singles at 4. And you're going to be getting some top world talent at these events. You know, New York City is a strong region. We have top world talent. And it's a much chiller vibe than the weeklies, I'd say, because it's a bit earlier, you know. Um, and there's a bit less of, like, a rush feeling because, you know, people don't have work the next day or anything. So it's a really, like, nice, chill time to get really top-level top, top level practice. Definitely recommend it.